Hi everyone, in this final episode we're going to add the ability to delete points by shift left clicking on them. We're also going to create a little custom inspector to show all of the shapes and provide an easy way to select and delete them. And finally we're going to get the mesh display working for our shapes. Okay, so to start with, let's create a method called delete point under mouse. And this is going to get the selected shape. And it's going to say selected shape dot points dot remove at and the remove index will be selection info dot point index. Now that we've deleted the point, we'll want to make sure that selection info dot point is selected is false and selection info dot mouse is over point is also false. And then we can request a repaint. And we'll also want to uh, set this up with the undo functionality. So undo dot record object, passing in the shape creator, and a name for the action, which I'll just make delete point. Okay, I want to call this delete point under mouse method when the user shift left clicks on a point. So let's come down to the handle shift left mouse down method. And I'm going to say if the mouse is over a point, then we want to delete the point under the mouse. But we're first going to want to actually make sure that the shape under the mouse is selected. So I'll say select shape under mouse. And if the mouse is just over empty space, then we'll create a new shape and create a new point. So let's save that. I'll go into Unity and go into my game object here. I can try shift left clicking to delete some of these points. And let me try this on a grayed out object. So that all seems to be working as expected. So next up, let's make a display in the inspector for all of the shapes. So going into the shape editor script, let us up at the top here, create an override for the on inspector GUI method. And I want a for loop to loop through shape creator dot shapes dot count. And for each of the shapes, I want to draw a label. So I'll say GUI layout dot label. And it will just say shape and then the number of the shape. So I plus one. All right, I then also want a button so that we can press on it to select the shape. So I'll say if GUI layout dot button, and I'll call the button select. And then we can have our selection code, which will simply set selection info dot uh, selected shape index equal to I. And then let's have another button, GUI layout dot button, call this one delete. And here we can't delete the shape immediately because that will cause havoc with our for loop. So let's rather outside of the loop create an int called shape delete index, set that equal to negative one. And if we press the delete button, then I'll set the shape delete index equal to I. Outside of the loop, we can then say if the shape delete index is not equal to negative one, then we can say shape creator and dot shapes dot remove at, and we'll remove at the shape delete index. Now we want to be sure that when we delete a shape, our selected shape index doesn't go out of bounds. So let's just say selection info dot selected shape index is equal to mathf.clamp. So the value we want to clamp is the selected shape index. The minimum value it can have is zero and the max value it can have is shape creator and dot shapes dot count minus one. Let's also then make it so that we can undo the deletion of a shape. So undo dot record object, shape creator, and I'll call this delete shape. Okay, let's save this and go into Unity. And we should see our shapes list popping up here. 
It's got a lot more shapes than I expected. Uh, it seems like I must have accidentally created a bunch of empty shapes. So let me quickly right click and just reset the shape creator script to clear all of that. And I'll just create three shapes here quickly to experiment with. So if I press select uh, on shape two, for example, you can see that nothing actually changes in the scene until I bring the mouse over the scene view, which forces it to repaint. And the same will probably go for the deleting, as you can see. So in the script, let's at the bottom here say if GUI.changed, which will be true if we interact with any of the elements in the inspector. So for example, if we click on any of these buttons, then I'm going to say needs repaint is true. And I'm going to force the scene view to repaint by saying scene view dot repaint all. All right, so if we save this now, go back into Unity, then uh, we should be able to select these points and also delete them. And Command Z should bring those back. Now, I'm noticing that when I undo, it's not selecting the last shape as we set it up to do in the previous episode. And I think the reason for this, if we go down to the uh, undo or redo method here, is that the selected shape index can also be negative one. So let's just say or selection info dot shape index is equal to negative one. Then we want to set it to the last element there. Okay, coming back up to the on inspector GUI method, let's make this a little bit more compact by just surrounding this in a call to GUI layout dot begin horizontal and GUI layout dot end horizontal. All right, so if I save that, go into Unity, should see that this packs each of these onto a single line. I think it would also be nice if the select button of the shape that is currently selected would be grayed out. So let's quickly, just before we draw the select button, say GUI.enabled is true only if I is not equal to the selected shape index. And then after we draw the button, let's just make sure that GUI.enabled gets set back to true. All right, so if we have a look at this quickly, uh, shape one is now grayed out on the select button. And uh, you can see how that works if we select the other shapes. Okay, uh, when we have lots of shapes, it might be nice to be able to hide the shapes list if we don't want it getting in our way. So let's quickly go into the shape creator script. And here I'm going to create a public bool called show shapes list. And I'm going to make this hidden in the inspector with the hidden inspector attribute. And of course, the reason we're making this variable in the shape creator script rather than in the shape editor is just because these variables are serialized. So uh, it can save their value between uh, script recompiles or loading the project. So that's obviously important for a toggle because we don't want it forgetting its value each time we make a change to a script or reload the scene or whatever. So what we'll do just before calling the for loop to draw all of the buttons is say shape creator dot show shapes list is equal to editor GUI layout dot fold out and uh, we pass in the current value of shape creator dot show shapes list, and then we can give a name to the fold out. So I'll just call this show shapes list. Okay, and then only if shape creator dot show shapes list is true, will we draw any of this stuff. Okay, so if I save that, go into Unity, we should see this surrounded in a, a little fold out so we can show or hide that as we please. All right, now one minor annoyance is this little uh, transform gizmo can get in the way a little bit. So let's hide that by going to the shape editor into the uh, on enable method. We can just say 
tools dot hidden is true and then on disable we'll just set that back to false so tools dot hidden equals false so now we should see that disappear and then if we go into another object then the transform gizmo will come back okay now the last thing that i want to set up for this series is getting a mesh drawn in for all of these shapes so let me quickly rename this object to shape creator and then we'll create a new empty game object called shape mesh let me just reset that transform and this is going to have a mesh filter and a mesh renderer component and i'm going to want a material for that mesh renderer so let me quickly create new material just call this the mesh material and maybe make this just an unlit gray something like that apply that there and then in the shape creator script we're going to want a reference to the mesh renderer so i'll just call this mesh renderer and then we'll also have a public void update mesh display all right and we'll provide the implementation for that in a moment but for now i want to go into the shape editor and in the draw method say just down here at the bottom i'll have if needs repaint then shape creator dot update mesh display all right now this needs repaint variable name is actually a little bit misleading because uh, whenever the scene view repaints itself we need to run this draw code uh, otherwise just nothing will be drawn to the scene and that has to happen regardless of whether or not needs repaint is true so what this needs repaint actually means is has the shape changed since the last repaint call so i'm going to rename it to shape changed since last repaint and now because we want the shape creator to update the mesh display immediately when the object is first selected in on enable we'll say shape changed since last repaint is true all right let's save that and go into unity and we'll wait for this little mesh renderer to pop up here and we can drag our shape mesh object in there now to actually uh, implement this update mesh display method we're going to need a couple of scripts which as i mentioned in the first episode i'll be providing to handle all of the mesh triangulation so you can download those now from the link in the description of this video i'm just going to drag them into my project here it's this geometry folder and here we've got a bunch of scripts but i just want to draw your attention to the shape script uh, if i open this up you can see that this is identical to the shape class that we created in the shape creator so i'm actually going to now delete this from here and uh, let this one take over and you can also see that all of the geometry stuff is in this namespace uh, sebastian.geometry so up at the top of the class we're going to add using sebastian.geometry and that will need to apply for the shape editor as well so i'll come up here using geometry okay then in update mesh display we just need to create a composite shape uh, so i'll call this comp shape is equal to a new composite shape passing in our shapes list and then we can say mesh renderer dot mesh ah i'm just <laughs> i'm just realizing it's the mesh filter of course that holds the mesh let me change this quickly to mesh filter and rename this mesh filter here we say mesh filter dot mesh is equal to composite shape dot get mesh okay so we can save that go into unity we'll of course need to now apply the mesh filter here so we can see the scene view going haywire there all right but just clear those errors now 
And here we can see a mesh being drawn in for all of these shapes. And hopefully, if I create a shape inside of another shape, you should see that it actually carves a hole out of that. So let me just delete these shapes here quickly and just experiment with this a bit. So I need to create one big shape here. And if you want to see the triangulations, by the way, just as a matter of curiosity, you can turn on shaded wireframe. Uh, the triangulation is being done with an algorithm called ear clipping, which is a fairly slow algorithm, and my implementation of it is probably not very optimal either, but it should be totally fine for the purposes of this tool at least. Now, just to talk in terms of what you can and can't do, uh, you can have uh, multiple nested shapes and holes, like so. Uh, the only thing you can't really do is have uh, polygons which intersect, so if I make a self-intersection here, you'll see it just simply won't draw it. And also if you have a overlapping hole like so, uh, it will just not draw one of the holes. One small bug that I've discovered is that sometimes when I do an undo, uh, the mesh doesn't always update immediately. So uh, what I can do is just come down to the on undo or redo method and just make sure that we say that the shape has changed since the last repaint. All right. I think the very last thing that I want to do in this series is just add a little help box at the top of the shape creator here, just explaining the commands. So we can go up to the top of the shape editor into the uh, on inspector GUI method. And here let's make a string called help message. And I'll just say left click to add points. And then on a new line, shift left click on point to delete. New line, shift left click on empty space to create new shape. All right, I think that basically covers the important stuff. And then we can just say uh, editor GUI layout dot help box, pass in our help message. And then we want to supply a message type to tell it how to display it. And we just want it to be a info message. All right, so if we save this, go into Unity, we should see our little help box popping up right there. Cool, so that is everything for this series. I hope you have enjoyed, and until next time, cheers.